Stop, stop, stop. This video is not for everyone. If you are a veteran Blender user who is deeply entrenched into the world of Blender's esoteric shortcuts, then this video is of no use to you. Please watch my other Blender videos and future ones. If, on the other hand, you are really interested in Blender, but are afraid of the nightmarish reputation of Blender's ungodly shortcuts and non-standard basic operations, and perhaps have even tried and given up before in the past, then this video is certainly for you. My tutorial videos are usually short because they are straight to the point. Unfortunately for this one, you will have to take a short journey with me as I guide you on setting up Blender so that it will behave more or less as you expect from a user-friendly program. When you're done with this video, Blender, instead of being frustrated to figure out, will actually become fun to use. This is a long video by my standard, but I promise that I will not troll you by moving my mouse aimlessly around the screen, I will not pointlessly rotate the viewport for no apparent reason, and I will certainly not troll you with long as 20 minutes Blender tutorials that takes forever to get to the point. This is Bracer Jack, and let's do this. Open Blender. Go to User Preferences. Go to the Interface tab. Check Zoom to Mouse Position. Rotate Around Selection. And uncheck Show Splash. Go to the Editing tab and check Release Confirms. Go to the Input tab. Enable Select with Left and check Emulate Numpad. Now things are going to become a little more involved here. Fortunately, you only have to do it once, so watch and follow carefully. Go to 3D View, 3D View Global. Under Key Binding, press Z. Make sure you select the right one here. It's under the 3D View. Click it and press F3 on your keyboard. It should then disappear. Now set the Rotate, Move, and Zoom to a shortcut key of choice. Since most of the users I've encountered are coming into Blender from a 3D Cinemax background, it will be helpful to set Rotate to Alternate plus Middle Mouse, Move to Control plus Middle Mouse, and Zoom to Control plus Alternate plus Middle Mouse. Change the view selected to Z so that every time you want to focus on a particular object, you can just press Z for Zoom. This makes so much sense, you don't even have to remember it. Type Redo under Name and change the shortcut key to Ctrl plus Y to match every other programs out there so that instead of fighting Blender, you can just use it. Type in Quart and change the shortcut key to Alternate plus W. Set this back to key binding. Type in Wheel and under the 3D view, remove the top two options. Using the mouse to zoom in and out of the 3D viewport seems like a good idea, but more often than not, it is a hindrance. Under 3D View, 3D View Global, search for Border Select and change it from Keyboard to Tweak so that you can drag select multiple objects in Blender the same way you could in every other program. Scroll to the bottom and click Add New. Type this in. Now you will be able to deselect any previously selected item by clicking away at some empty space just like every other program out there, hereby reducing your learning curve to near zero. Change this to key binding. Type 5 and under 3D view, change this to 7. It will disappear after you have done that. Now type in 1, scroll down, find this under 3D view, and expand it. Select and copy this text by pressing Ctrl plus C. Change the view to top. Now change this to 2. Find and expand this, and override it with what you had copied by pressing Ctrl plus V. Change the view to bottom. Now type in 3. Scroll down and find it. Change the view to left. Now type in 4. Scroll down and find it. 
Overwrite the existing text by selecting and pressing Ctrl plus V. Change the view to right. Scroll to the top and clear it off. Scroll down again and click Add New. Change the shortcut to 5. Paste the text again and change the view to Front. Scroll to the top again and press 6. Overwrite the text again and change the view to Back. Because of what we've just done, switching between views in Blender, especially when you're using a laptop without a numpad, will be extremely simple. Go to the File tab and set Font Path to where you store your fonts and enable Auto Run Python Scripts, as most add-ons require this to be enabled anyway. Go to the System tab and select this setting. If you don't do this, selecting bones in your rigged characters will be painfully slow. Now click Save User Settings or else everything that you have done will be for nothing when Blender restarts. Close the Preference dialog. Select the cube. Go to edit mode and press this button. This will make sure that when you drag select, all vertices, edges, and or faces within the drag boundary will be selected, which is what everybody would have expected anyway. Go back to the object mode by clicking here or you could just press the tab key. Now press N. Always turn on back face curling. Always leave it on so that you know where the normals are actually facing. This should have been on by default. This should have been on by default. I also changed the lens here to 90 because it seems more correct to me, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Press N to close the panel. Change the renderer to Cycles. Change this from 50% to 100% because beginners often wonder how come it didn't render at the resolution that was stated, though this will come in handy as you grew to know what it is in the future. Check border so that it doesn't render beyond what the camera can see to prevent wasting rendering power. Change the default folder for render output if you have a default folder of choice. Under sampling, click this button and set clamp indirect to 10. Under Film, check Transparent. Now click this tab, go to Color Management, change the view to Filmic, and look to Base Contrast. Now select the camera and click the Camera tab. Under Camera Presets, select this standard film camera and change the focal length to 50 to match conventional standard. Now click File, Save Startup File, and Confirm. Congratulations, you did it! You have made Blender usable. Well, that's it for now. Blender's Cycle Renderer produces absolutely gorgeous images without even trying. I got bored when creating this instructional video and arbitrarily placed two Blender primitives on top of each other. Duplicated this a few more times, threw in a texture, hit Render, and I was like, Are you serious? No, are you serious? If this kind of realism can be accomplished with a free software with a few clicks after it has been properly configured for standard usability, if this kind of realism can be accomplished with a free software then, you know, it really gets you thinking. I've made and will continue to make more Blender videos in the future. I don't consider myself a fanboy so I don't try to get myself into the club by saying only nice things about Blender. If you want to see more straight to the point videos like this, be sure to smash the like button and consider being my Patreon as well. Every little bit helps. This is Bracewood Jack and I'll see you next time. Bye.